So um, what I want you guys to go through is on cosine. Now there's a couple important things. There's a very, very big misconception that I need to make sure I have everybody's attention for because this is very true to my heart when I see this mistake on a test. And it happens a lot of the times. All right, please do not. Because it's a big mistake and you, it really hampers your whole understanding of the problem. In this case, I am giving you an angle that is being divided by 2. That angle, theta divided by 2, is 19 pi over 12. What I'm asking you to do is evaluate for cosine of pi over 2. So I might give you an angle and say, hey, evaluate this for pi over 2, where this angle is in this case. Now, going back to what is the cosine formula, which is the square root of, I forget, square root of 1 plus cosine. I thought it was wrong. So our formula, plus or minus 1 plus the cosine of theta divided by 2. Now what's important about this, ladies and gentlemen, is that we have to understand that this cosine of theta is of theta, not of theta divided by 2. Do you guys see the difference? Theta, theta divided by 2. Theta, theta divided by 2. So I need to be able to figure out what is theta. So what I'll do is I'll do theta over 2 equals 19 pi over 12. Now, to solve for theta, I'll multiply by 2 on both sides. And I have theta equals 19 pi over 2 over 12 reduces down to 1 sixth, right? 1 sixth times 19 pi, so it's 19 pi over 6. Now, can we evaluate for 19 pi over 6? Yeah, we can, right? But do we want to evaluate for 19 pi over 6? Or where is 19 pi over the unit circle? That's a lot of revolutions. So what I can also do is find the coterminal <coughs> angle. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. So what I can do is find the coterminal angle. Well, how do we find the coterminal angle again, Ms. McGulligan? Oh, we add and subtract 2 pi, right? Well, you don't understand how I got that? No, I'll just say it. Six. Fine, multiply it. I don't care what you do. Times 2. That gives you 38 pi over 12. Right? Can you divide those by 2, the top and bottom? What's the common factor? How do you simplify that? Uh, over 6, yeah. OK, so now if I find the coterminal angle, what I'll do is I'll subtract 2 pi, which is 12 pi over 6. Therefore, an equivalent angle is going to be 7 pi over 6. And that, is that much easier for you guys to visualize where that is on the unit circle? I hope so. Yeah, it's right down there. So we go to right down there. Seven pi over six is right there when broken it up into sixth. Now the next thing we need to do is determine that if that's pi over six, which is square root of three over two comma one half, then this point is what we did first, which is negative square root of three over two comma negative one half. Okay. So now remember, so for theta, for cosine of theta which is the equivalent to 7 pi over 6, the cosine is the x value, which is negative square root of 3 over 2. So what I want you guys to do is now what we do is we plug that in. We do not plug in 19 pi over 12 in for cosine of theta or try to evaluate. We need to evaluate for the 7 pi over 6 or 19 pi over 6, whichever you know, way you want to think about it. And when we did that, we got cosine as negative square root of 3 over 2. So what I have is 1 plus negative square root of 3 over 2 divided by 2. Right? I just plug in the value of my cosine. Now, I don't want to have that cosine, that denominator there. Right? I want to get rid of that 2 in the denominator. So to do that, I can multiply by a 2 on the top and on the bottom. Now, stop me if I lose you on this. 
But the, so when I multiply a 2 by applying distributive property, I now have plus or minus the square root of 2 negative square root of 3 over 4. If you didn't see where I got it, let me know. I'll be more than happy to show you how I distribute it. Everybody good? OK. One thing I want to remind you guys of, if I have the square root of 25 over 16, that's the same thing as the square root of 25 over the square root of 16. OK? So I can take the square root of the numerator, and I can take the square root of the denominator. Yeah? Following that rule. I can't take the square root of 2 minus the square root of 3, because the square root does not distribute across addition and subtraction. However, Connor, I can take the square root of 4. So my final answer is going to be 2 minus the square root of 3 over 2, which you could also read right as a 1 half times that. Kevin, questions? That's the answer. Make sense? Cool? All right, so you guys want to do, do a plug and chug? Yeah. Yay!